Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today we're gonna to be talking about the HANA ML and my initial impressions of this cartridge. It's in the break-in stage. Um, it's got about 10 hours on it. Um, I won't be doing a full review of it until I have at least 100 hours on it, but I wanted to give you my initial impressions of it and a little bit of history about how I arrived at this point. Um, before I get started, if you haven't uh, got in on, on the Tone Poet giveaway, uh, there's a video, a couple videos back, I'll leave a link below, that uh, you can win a Blue Note Tone Poet, uh, a sealed copy of Babyface Willette face to face. All you got to do is watch the video and leave a comment in the comment section. The details are there in the video, so uh, get, in, get in on that. The giveaway happens at 7,500 subscribers. We're at uh, almost uh, 7,100 now. I expect to be there within 30 days. So uh, definitely check that out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please uh, consider hitting like, subscribe, and notification so you'll be sure to get notified of any new content that comes up. So I'll try to make this brief. I was going to do a blow by blow, um, you know, showing each record and what I heard, but. It's got to be a little too long. Let me put it in a nutshell. Um, when I started with the with this journey, it was with the SL. So the SL um, was almost 100 videos ago. <laughs> Hard to believe. Um, one of my most popular videos was called My Date with Hannah. And that was my initial excitement and getting the cartridge, going to the store. It shows all of that. The installation and so forth and I really did like the cartridge um, but I had a few reservations about it that became more apparent over time sometimes these things don't make themselves evident until you've listened for a while and the the SL uh, seemed to, in my system to accentuate groove noise and high frequency detail to the point where it was making it a little bit less enjoyable to listen to records or certain records at least I couldn't listen to all my records with the cartridge um, and I, I started to feel like maybe there was something wrong with it I sent it off to musical surroundings and they checked it out and didn't find anything wrong with it but in talking with me and based on my listening uh, preferences and my system they really felt like the ML would be a better choice for me, and they made a path for me to upgrade to the ML for uh, a very reasonable price. So since I had so much invested in the SL and I really didn't get the enjoyment I thought I should out of it, I said, you know what, I'm gonna pay the little bit of extra and get what was their top of the line cartridge at the time. It has since been surpassed by the Unami series, but, um, this is sort of sitting in the middle, the sweet spot of the line. It's $1,200, not a cheap cartridge for sure, for most of us, but um, it's a cartridge that has a lot of refinements over the SL, and I will go into details on those when I do the full review. But um, while the SL was at the doctor, um, at Musical Surroundings, uh, Ken, um, I put in this one, which is the AT33EV, which offers a complete, completely different side of the coin to the HANA line. This is a very forgiving, lush cartridge. It's very musical, very natural sounding, <clears throat> but um, it's missing a little bit of high frequency detail. It's extremely quiet in the groove, and it was the antidote for what I was looking for after my experience with the SL. Um, I really had no urge to take it out of the system, but because of the upgrade offer for this, I decided let's go for the ML and see what it's all about. And uh, my initial impressions right out of the box, and I will say something about right out of the box. Um, Break-in is a very real thing. Um, things have to relax in the, in the uh, 
playing of the cartridge. So the suspension will relax, uh, the, the diamond gets polished uh, as you play it, and the sound changes slightly, usually improving. Um, usually harsh edges improve, um, space improves, detail uh, in the bass improves. So all these things do happen. So people say that break-in isn't real. No, it's a physical thing. Um, there is a little bit of a, your ears getting adjusted to the new sound as well, but there is something happening with break-in that's very significant. Yet, you do get the basic character of a cartridge right out of the box. And that was the case with this. The basic character was evident right from the get-go. Um, the ML as well. Right off the bat, one of the things that I was very concerned about because of my experience with the SL was how quiet is it going to be in the groove. And it proved to be super quiet. It glides through effortlessly through the groove. And um, it provides a very black background. You don't hear groove noise. And that was such a relief to know that that's not a trait um, of all the stylus shapes that are used in the Hanna line. I think the ML seems to be very silky and smooth in the groove. And that was a great thing. The second thing I noticed was spatial characteristics. Um, this one has a, a very nice sense of space, but when you compare it against the ML, the space opens up more. There is more clarity and detail and width and depth. All those things are improved with the ML. And for better or worse, you, you, you're getting more of everything. And sometimes where this would make a recording that is not stellar sound listenable, um, the ML could reveal the truth about a recording and it become a little less so. But in general, I'm finding that the ML gives you the extra detail that was missing here uh, with the with the Audio Technica and presenting it in a fashion that is very listenable and not overly emphasized like I found with the SL. So that's great too. Another nice thing is the depth of bass on this cartridge is quite noticeable uh, against this one. It had a deeper, more solidly anchored bass response. And that was very interesting as well to me. So overall, my impressions um, of the ML have been very favorable. Um, I expect it to improve with the break-in. The only things that I noticed that were a little bit, um, you know, noticeable were just some some high frequencies were just a little bit little bit edgy uh, and it's only like certain s sounds and um some high percussion things like bells or or shakers or things like that um honestly it's very minor and i don't think it's an issue um overall i'm enjoying the increased clarity and it has the warmth and detail and depth that this does, but it pre presents it with the lights on. This is a little bit um, of low lighting situation in a way, you know, it's a little forgiving. So um, I feel like I'm hearing the truth of these recordings and that is a very valuable tool for me. And I'm glad to have the ML in my, my arsenal. So uh, I'll have more to say on it in the future. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. If you have the ML, let me know how you went through your break-in and how you're liking it now. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.